many of us who are in very intellectual and cerebral professions, maybe we're uh, stockbrokers or we're psychiatrists or we're university professors, are amazed at how physically we live our lives. That is, we teach all kinds of high-minded standards and ways of thinking to our students, and we operate in our businesses on the basis of intellectual and analytical thinking. But when it comes to our own weekend lives, we find ourselves descending to the lowest levels of physical stimulation and regarding that as our greatest happiness. And so we are baffled at ourselves because on the one hand, our Monday through Friday lives tend to elevate the intellect and the mind, and then our weekend lives tend to elevate the uh, physical and the more animal side of our natures. And uh, we are, of course, more and more bewildered at this when it begins to blow our domestic scene apart or destroy our own personal lives. And we wonder why on earth do we who know so much better end up doing what we know is not the highest and not the best and not the greatest quality of life. And that's the kind of question we're discussing on this program because we're talking about how our personalities were intended to work by the one who originated life and who made us. And we've been discussing uh, the way in which the supreme being behind the universe made our personalities on three different levels, on the physical level, on the psychological level, and on the spirit level. And what we have done is take a page, and you can't do it, obviously, if you're driving, but if you're sitting at home, you probably can do it very easily. We've taken a page and divided it into three parts. Uh, the top third of the page, we've... Uh, called body, uh, the middle third we've called soul, and the bottom third spirit. And we've drawn a line or an arrow from the top of the page to the bottom, from body through soul through spirit. And uh, what we mean by soul it comes from the Greek word suke, which becomes our English word psyche or psychological, and uh, the soul is simply the psychological part of us. And the outline of our personality that has been given by our Creator through His Son, in that old book that we often just allow to gather dust, is that we have within us our own interior selves. The very essence of you is your spirit. And round that you wear like an overcoat your soul, or the psychological part of you, your will and your mind and emotions. And round that you wear another outside overcoat your body. And so the body has contact with the world of things and circumstances and people through its five senses. The soul has contact with itself. It's the self-conscious part of us. And the spirit is the part of us that is able to contact the supreme being behind the universe. And so the way our personalities normally work is the way we've just drawn them on that page. That is, we stimulate the body either by a kiss or by an embrace or by a good meal or by a pint, or by a fifth, or by a shot of heroin, and by that means we stimulate the emotions, which are, of course, connected so tightly to the body. And we hope in that way to somehow stir the spirit into life. Indeed, many of us, when we have a high caused by tr drugs or caused by alcohol, we think, ah, oh, we've reached some kind of spirit sphere. Well, we haven't even touched the spirit. Normally the old spirit is lying there absolutely dead and asleep, except maybe for some of its functions. It has the function of conscience, and sometimes the conscience is somewhat alive in us because of our upbringing. But our spirits are normally fairly dead. 
And all we are is little soul body animals that operate just at a slightly higher level than the animal. Rarely actually very much above the animal because what we said yesterday was most of us find ourselves on this sphere f flying through space at thousands of miles an hour, feeling very insecure and driven by the need to get some security, at least to get a roof over our heads, at least to be left uh, not without a home when our parents die or to have some clothes on our backs. And so most of us see the tremendous need to establish some kind of physical security for ourselves, and that communicates itself through our body, which feels the cold and feels hungry, to our emotions usually, where we feel dreadfully abandoned and dreadfully uh, desolate and exposed if uh, our parents once die. And uh, that communicates, it, communicates itself to our mind, which then begins to manipulate the money on the earth or the jobs on the earth or the other people on the earth so that somehow we will be able to get some security for ourselves in the way of our good education that will give us a good job, that will give us enough money to buy food, shelter and clothing. And so most of us operate just between the body and the soul in that kind of almost uh, response, reflex, Pavlov's dogs kind of way. And most of us don't operate much above the level of Pavlov's dogs. You remember when he brought the food out, they began to secrete saliva. Uh, and most of us uh, exist that way. Uh, we say we operate on the level of our souls, but it's virtually not at all. Our souls are the slaves of our bodies. And so uh, on the level of security, that's the way we operate. When we look around and see there are five billion people on the earth and they all think they're unique and we know we're alone unique, uh, they just don't seem to notice it, then we are overcome by the dreadful insignificance of our lives. And so we feel we need to get some significance and we need to get somebody else's respect. So we try to manipulate the people uh, around us to respect us and look up to us. And the body therefore sees when the boss notices you or the body sees when your children respect you or when they don't respect you. That sends a signal to your emotions which are accordingly elated or depressed and that sends a signal to your mind which in turn manipulates that person so that they will in fact give you the respect that you feel you deserve. And so we operate simply as little uh, physical soul beings with little that touches our spirit at all. All the time our spirit is virtually completely dead and asleep. And so we continue in this kind of existence year after year. The difficulty is that we never actually get a permanent sense of significance or self-esteem or self-worth because the esteem that we're looking for has to come from a deeper part of our being than just the approval of other people or the recognition of our peers. We, of course, are running simply a, a little internal closed circuit that operates from the outside world, uh, people and their opinion, to our emotions, which are pleased when they approve of us or when they give us some reward, to our minds, which then in turn uh, manipulate them further or simply lie dormant, and then we go back to the people again and what they think of us. And so it's a little vicious circle that operates simply between the body and the soul. It's the same with the security situation. We never do get a complete sense of security because, of course, an incurable disease can always strike you anyway and wash you out financially. So we never do get a complete sense of security. And indeed, finally, we know that there is ultimate insecurity in lying in a box in the ground uh, deteriorating and being eaten by the worms. So finally, security is a mirage and a horizon that we never reach. But we still run that little vicious circle between our body and the things that we put in our tummies or that we wear on our 
uh, bodies or that we cover our heads with in the way of houses, and we run that between our the things that we can get hold of and the emotions that result from that and the mind's response to that situation. And so we're running all the time vicious little circles that operate simply on the top two-thirds of the page there between the body and the soul. And uh, that's why we never gain any permanent satisfaction from them. How was it meant to work? Well, let's talk about that tomorrow.